Welcome to CFRI Cystic Fibrosis Community Voices, a video podcast series created by and for the cystic fibrosis community. So, okay, now we'll move on to the issue of cross-infection, which um, clearly has kept members of our community isolated uh, from one another and has led to a climate of anxiety for many. Um, and so in the film, the six foot rule that we all know about, that in fact, are we almost six feet, yeah. that you know, we all know we're spitting on each other. Um, and in the film, she, she steals that foot back from CF for five, um, to be five feet apart. And I'm curious how people felt about this and whether it sends a positive or a negative message um, to others with CF about risk taking or not. So I'd love to hear people's perspectives. So. I had some interesting reactions from my family, actually. Um, it kind of ties in with the first question. Um, I had several that didn't have any idea that there was a restriction uh, between me and other CF patients. They knew vaguely about a lot of what I go through, but they didn't know that. Um, and then I had one relative who actually thought that it applied to everybody and that he had been breaking the rules my whole life by hugging me, like <laughs> just a healthy relative. Um, so I think that in that respect, just the general overview was helpful for people who don't know much about it. Um, specifically regarding the, the way that they treated Stella's transplant process. Um, for every positive that they did with the six foot rule and and two pre-transplant patients not being near each other. To me, that was kind of negated in the end when she woke up from her transplant. Nobody was in a mask or gown. There was like eight people in her room. She was getting presents from Will who had touched these things that had probably sepatia on them. Um, so it was, it was great intent and a lot of people probably wouldn't catch that. But within the community, if you're just learning about transplant and that part is new to you, to me, that was a touchy place where they could have been a little more careful. Thank you. Good point. And your uncle must be very relieved he can hug you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I figured out the unmute thing now. Um, so, you know, there's like two different feelings that I had when they were talking about um, cross infection. Obviously, it is very important in the community. Um, I am also a little older. And I used to have CF friends and I would go play with them. They lived down the street. Um, we would hang out and it wasn't until I was about like 10 years old that all of a sudden, like you weren't allowed to be friends with them anymore. Um, so for some people, they've grown up with this six foot cross infection rule their whole, their whole life. They, they don't know any different. Um, so I think, and Beth touched on this as well a little bit, like we, you know, for some of us, we did grow up being able to interact with other CF patients. Um, so at the part where she like steals that foot back, I was kind of like, I get that. Like, cause I used to have a, you know, close relationship as a younger, like with CF friends. And then all of a sudden it was just like, no more. Um, and this was before social media, so and I was like 10. Um, so it basically ended those friendships for me with those people because there was really no way to keep a, you know, interest. Like, I couldn't go to their house anymore. Like, I could call them on the phone, but, like, you, you, you know, when you can't see somebody or be around them, you really do lose a lot of that, you know, relationship that you have, CF or not, you know, aside. Um, so for me, like, obviously cross infection is very important and like the audience seemed to catch on to that. Um, but you know, when she was like, I just want to steal that one foot back. I was like, yeah, I get that. Um, you know, CF does take a lot of things away from us that, you know, we don't talk about. Um, I do have CF friends now, thanks to the internet and like Gunnar has talked about, like in Julie Gray, like we can't hang out. I can't hug that person like when she got Stella got so upset about Poe like that is very real um 
So even if it was stealing one foot back, like obviously it's probably not the smartest thing to do. And, you know, knowing what we know now, we shouldn't. But being from an age and time where we could interact and we could be friends, um, I could kind of relate to that. And, you know, like, in lo- like you could go to the supermarket and be standing two feet from somebody has CF. You would have no idea. Um, so with that mindset, like, you know, we sh- should embrace things like that. Like I saw that kind of as like a positive of her saying like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this because I want to enjoy and celebrate, you know, life. Um, obviously I don't recommend it <laughs> uh, or endorse the idea, but I could kind of relate, especially because having friends when I was younger that I then couldn't, you know, continue having those friendships with now and having friends now that I can't, I can't go get coffee with. I can't go eat dinner with. Um, just for the simple fact that even though they don't have Sapatia or, or even MRSA, like, I, I don't want to risk hurting them and they don't want to risk hurting me. So, but to just, you know, when she says I was, when she was like, I'm just going to take that one foot back. I was like, yeah, girl, you take that foot back. You take it back. Um, also, again, in my head, I knew it was a movie and nobody was really going to get hurt. But just the empowering idea of taking, you know, something negative and, and empowering yourself to take something back when you feel like certain things have been stolen from you. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Kelsey. Can you hear me? Yes. So the thing is, us older generation of CFers, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have that capability of networking with other CFers outside of the hospital. And so a lot of us connected in the hospital together. Like I remember countless times where we would all be doing our breathing treatments together in the activity room, playing on the computer, playing video games together. Like that was how we bonded. And I know a lot of you have read my story in regards to dating another CFR. And it was at that turning point where, you know, the internet started to become bigger and easier to find other CFRs, you know, similar life. And I didn't have that precautions, you know, being put into me, hey, you can't be around each other. And so when I met Heather, it's like, I didn't have anything telling me that this wasn't okay. And it ended up being, you know, three of the best years of my life. And it wasn't until actually being with her and contracting MRSA from her that I realized it was a little bit more serious that, hey, we're actually supposed to be staying away from each other. And, you know, now it's like, okay, well, I have this virus that I need to stay away from other people. But really, it's more a matter of sitting down, being aware of the precautions, and if you feel it's worth it or not. Like, I don't see it worth hiding your whole life if it's something that you can connect with somebody and love them and be together like it's worth it yeah, your, your article was beautiful very moving thank you and you know i think about when when tess was born her first hospitalization we went in and we were first put into a room with five there are five of us in the room and uh four of the five kids had cf and then they a room opened up and so we were moved into another room with another child with CF and then <laughs> then it, it moved so the next hospitalization though everything had changed and she was in isolation and there's no leaving the room but she was you know a toddler her first hospitalization so she has no memory of being able to go to the playroom and do all those things and so she she came into consciousness but you know I always laugh like it's six feet now but I think there used to be no feet yeah. And then do you all remember three feet? Yeah. <laughs> and then three feet wasn't enough. It became six feet. So, you know, hopefully we stop at the six feet. But it's yeah. been a whole evolving thing. And I, I think that is, you know, what I said in the very beginning about infection control and how you live with that, how you apply that to your own life is just so intensely personal. And you really just have to have respect if you're not putting others at risk and everybody's consenting adults. 
um, about the decisions you make about being with others. And um, I think that's, it's like a hard thing to navigate in our community because people have strong feelings about it. Yeah, I mean, having a brother with CF and growing up together, six feet was not an option, mm -hmm. right? We had the same doctor's appointment, so we can't be six feet apart in the car um, or anything like, you know, those kinds of things. And we're always very conscious of what each other is culturing at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, not being able to hug my brother or spend time with my brother, um, visit him in the hospital would be devastating. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, navigating my cross infection rules with my brother is very different than how I navigate it with the rest of the community and being conscious of what I'm growing and being aware of that. But there's a point where CF doesn't get to take my brother from me mm -hmm. and we will make it work um but it, it yeah it's intensely personal and it can be very difficult to manage on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. but and i know it looks different for every cf community but finding those risks and what's more important than other things and for me it's it's more important to me to be able to hug my brother and mm -hmm. spend time with him than it is to make sure that you know i'm not growing a certain thing right. you know right. i'll do what i have to do if it means i get to have a relationship with my brother at the end of the day so absolutely for me it's a little different Mm -hmm. you know, other siblings too that's a whole yeah. other interesting it's tough. Uh, perspective Paul yay oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's arrived <laughs> you are unmuted hi Paul hi Siri um, yeah I, I agree with most everything that's been said uh, I would kind of like to emphasize the point of agency and that is that each of us as adults or, or even pre-adults develop a sense of agency that we have every right to exercise. And, you know, being isolated is a real torture. And being excluded or excluded or banned or whatever you want to call it is uh, it's a persecution. It just, just to amplify that really egregiously, that's what we do to people in prison. You know, we put them in, in, uh, in uh, isolation is the, one of the worst uh, tortures. And so when I saw the movie, it really became, it really impressed upon me that the anecdote to loneliness is touch. And so if you, if you can't touch someone and you have to stay so far apart, how do you get beyond that barrier? You know, how do you how, how do you get to that really basic essential communication with contact? And you know, I, I again, I think it's really a very personal thing and something that each of each of us has to uh, judge with his own uh, agency, uh, the ability to assimilate what's around us with what we know. And I, it would, you know, I I have a real I have a really difficult time was saying that everybody's got to be excluded or stay away from me six feet. Uh, I, you know, I know there are risks there, but I would quickly say that there are <clears throat> plenty of risk with most of the other people that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And most of them are not concerned or are uh, conscious of the fact that they are, uh, <laughs> that they carry bugs. Right. You know, and honestly, the sickest that I've got has never been from a patient with CF, but with somebody else who sneezed or sat next to me on the airplane or, or something like that. And, you know, they're just not conscious. And so part of my mission in life is to try to train people to not shake my hand because you just sneezed on it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so... So that's where I that's where I'm kind of coming from with the, these rules, and you know, the the CFF Foundation when it came out with the six foot rule did that came out like a bombshell, and it hurt a lot of people, and it made a lot of people extremely for, afraid. You know, it created an enormous amount of fear in our community, and the ones that I feel most um, sensitive about are the young parents who have a child with cystic fibrosis, and then they see this and they hear the all the so-called dangers of, to, to, of being near a, pers uh, a person with cystic fibrosis, and they don't want to come to clinic. 
because they're so terrified that somebody is going to pick a bug, bug up. And that can't be good. I mean, I certainly think that there are real rules in the clinic and the guidelines have, are very appropriate. <clears throat> but when we try to take those outside of the clinic and apply them to everybody, we get really conflicted very quickly. So, so what I worry about with this film, I mean, the, the message I got was that, hey, touch is really important, uh, <clears throat> critical to, to breaking down loneliness. But what I worry about is that the message from the film might be overboard with the public. And so people now begin to think of CF patients, not that we're not famous now, but now that we've become infamous, because we are now viewed as having some kind of terrible beta sepatia or whatever that is, it's going to contact somebody else. I don't, I don't know if anyone else is, is worried about that or if it uh, is a, even something that maybe I should be, not be worried about, but I do. I, I think that people are going to come away from that movie thinking that we are contaminated and that we're contagious and maybe we should be avoided. And so that, you know, Maybe it's not a big deal, but I, I worry about it in any case, because personally, I don't want to be kept off of airplanes in the, in the future. You know, I've still got a few miles to fly. And I can see something like this getting to the point that, well, hmm, you got to take, <laughs> you're coughing, you can't get on this airplane. <clears throat> so, you know, maybe I'm borrowing too much trouble. I don't know. But just, just to kind of bring that up to, as more food for thought before we completely end endorse everything here. That is an amazing perspective. I actually had not thought about it that way. But, you know, sometimes when you're so inside of it, you don't see things like that. I mean, in the sense of, because um, we know. <laughs> so, um, Paul, thank you for sharing that, because I had not thought about that.